Hey there everyone, welcome back to the channel. We are on the brink of having a brand new mythic hero, and then, so that means, of course, uh, we're gonna sit down and try and f figure out with uh, a few context clues who it may actually be. Uh, and that means we're looking at March. So, buckle up. Because <laughs> it's gonna be an interesting one. Uh, I wanna note, real quick, that uh, as with any kind of mythic or legendary prediction that I do, we are likely going to be talking about uh, some late game stuff in uh, a few games, particularly speaking, um, uh, Binding Blade, Blazing Blade, kind of, uh, Three Houses, and Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. So, just be aware of that. Uh, I guess technically Shadow Dragon 2, but I feel like everybody is mostly pretty aware of all of that is Shadow Dragon. Um, so, for what that's worth, just be aware. <laughs> we'll be talking about some things. I know people are like uber sensitive to spoilers, even though this game's been out for many, many years. Uh, so, just be aware of that. And uh, if you don't want to maybe hear something that you didn't think that you wanted to hear, then don't watch the video. <laughs> Um, but I will, I will make it clear, like, when I'm about to say something that may ruin your life. Uh, so just be, be aware of that. Anyway, uh, quick note before we go. Uh, if you're not following me on Instagram, I am going to kind of take the, um, the, the mandatory inside time, uh, that we're all kind of dealing with right now and embrace it and start posting, uh, some pictures of my Cypher collection. So... If you like looking at cipher cards, my Instagram is probably about to get really interesting over the next several weeks. Um, so if, if that if that's of interest to you, feel free. Um, I'll also have all of these predictions and things like that. The hero tracker, those all get posted to Instagram as well. So just wanted to make you aware of that. Now then, onto the video because it's been like a two minute intro already and I don't want to wait anymore. Marge Heroes, these are who we know are coming back. We have Altina and Roy in the red. Uh, blue is completely full. We've got Fjorm, Peony, and Tiki. And then in green, we have Thrasir, and Robin is our only colorless. So, what does that mean? It means there's no blues coming back. It means there is a single red coming back. Uh, there are multiple green and multiple colorless, but there's a good indicator that our mythic is going to be a colorless tome. You heard that right. If, if you missed uh, all of those things, I will get into them temporarily. But, as for the actual predictions for the banner, um, there's a handful of options. Uh, none of them are concrete, nor are any of them really that great. So, <laughs> I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that because, frankly, there are more interesting things that we can talk about, namely the Colorless Tome. Uh, so that's more than likely what we're going to do for the most part of this video. But uh, Hector, I think Halloween duo Hector, he is a... He's not a prime candidate, but he's not a bad candidate. And so the reason I say that is we don't know how the game is going to handle these duo units coming back. If they come back at all. We don't know. The only anomaly is kind of that we have the normal duo Ephraim, who is not a seasonal. He's not guaranteed, like, he's not coming back next fall, right? <laughs> All the other duos that we've had were on special seasonal banners, and so they are pretty much guaranteed to come back at that same time of year again uh, next year and so on. So that means duo Hector will definitely be back in October. But we don't know if he's going to be back any other time outside of that. Uh, and so I, I've, been, I've been racking my brain, like, trying to think what situation would IS bring them back. Um, I think a, a logical approach <laughs> would be to put them on a banner with multiple other rare five-star exclusive units uh, that are good in certain game modes that you have um, a, a one in multiple chance of getting that particular unit, and that is, of course, a type of monthly Mythic Legendary banner. Um, the other options would be a duo skills banner. 
Uh, I don't know that they would do that just because while we may have enough duo units to do that, uh, you're putting a lot of premium units in one particular banner uh, with very little repercussion to not get them. <laughs> so, um, I don't, I, I, if they want to keep them rare, I don't think that's the route that they would take. Uh, the other option might be that they show back up on a double special banner. Which, again, if rarity is the thing, double specials are definitely not the way to go because I, th I think um, statistically and um, orb-wise, those banners in particular are probably some of your best bang for buck that you can get. So I don't think they would put them in there either. I think they would spice up mythic and legendary banners. Like, genuinely. Uh, that said, if... Halloween Hector is on this mythic banner. Red is so damn good <laughs> that I don't think anybody would not pull. Uh, so I don't know if they would do that either. You know what I mean? It's uh, it, it, it's it's conflicting. And so I only throw him up here because we are kind of getting to that time of year where Halloween units are starting to show up again. Maybe um, there will definitely be some on the next double special banner that we get. However, uh, if they don't go that route. I think probably we're looking at Avil. Um, the other option would be Marita, but I don't think we're going to get Marita. I think it would probably be Avil first. And I say that just because red is already very good. I don't think they want to put Marita on that. <laughs> so I think uh, they maybe want to balance the goodness that is red, but maybe they do put Marita on there. I don't know. Uh, it's it's tough to say because we're kind of getting into these banners where uh, we don't know. And the other option, of course, is they go completely 180 and pull like they did with um, Loki uh, a couple months ago, where she was just on the banner for funsies. <laughs> we don't really know why. She just kind of was. Uh, there was no rhyme or reason or pattern or any kind of... Uh, prediction that could have made that a possibility but here we are there it is um, and so we we could make a full jump back a book or two and just see what <laughs> see what pops on here um, but if I had to take a guess I'd probably say we're looking at Avil um, maybe Halloween Hector so just be aware of that uh, next up for the green we have uh, Halloween La Rochelle Again, I don't know that they're going to put specials on this on these banners anymore. Uh, they have they've kind of started to taper away from that, and so I say this with the utmost caution. It's probably not Halloween La Rochelle, but it possibly could be Halloween La Rochelle. I think she's more than likely going to show up on the double special banner, which means Ocean might actually be the better candidate. And let me explain why. He has an even wave skill which is a banner that's happening this month. Uh, now they might not put him on that banner and put him on here instead. That is an option. Uh, and for those of you wondering, not to jump back too far, but red, um, Katria is on the Aerobatics banner. And it turns out, <laughs> looking back, there was a banner that Fallen Burkut was on, a skills banner, I think or Voting all or something. There was some kind of banner that Fallen Burkut was on back in August, so IS didn't actually skip him. They're actually using the skills and the gauntlet and all these other banners that pop up in order to put, in order to not put them on monthly banners, basically. Uh, so Katria will not be in red, just FYI. Uh, she's already on the Aerobatics banner, which is a way better value banner uh, anyway, so for what that's worth. That's why she will not be on here. Petra is also there, so that's why she is not a candidate. Not that we would have any blues anyway. Uh, but there you go. So I think what might likely happen is they won't put Ocean on the the Wave Skills banner, but they'll put them on here to kind of coincide with it, if that makes sense. Um, and they'll put somebody else on there as well. So there you go. That's that. Uh, Laram. <laughs> Laram is likely going to be the colorless unit um, and again not to jump back too far I'm not putting hardline predictions out there which is why I don't have a third uh, for the green slots that we're talking about um, I think more than likely we're gonna see like a Loki incident where we have some rando from a book or two ago pop back up on here um, 
along with OC and then Thrasir, so just be aware of that. Um, Laura, <laughs> pretty much the only option <laughs> that could happen at this point in time uh, for Kala, so I think she's definitely going to be on there. Um, that's, that's it. Uh, and luckily we have a little bit of guidance as to who is likely going to be the next mythic unit that we have um, for reasons that I am I will go into now but real quick let's just get rid of these guys uh, so we have kind of a hardline prediction of who who's gonna be where and what all right so if you missed it this happened see that right there under the green tome that's colorless tome they shadow dropped colorless tomes in heroes why probably because of this uh, there's there's a couple good indications. Number one, we have an early update coming in uh, on the 30th. They just announced that last night slash early this morning. Um, I believe that we are looking at a Mythic Hero on the 31st. Yes, we are. So, doesn't that seem interesting that they would do this big major update, uh, number one, early, Number two, the day before the next Mythic drops. Number three, we have a placeholder for something that doesn't exist in the game yet. Hmm. Very strange, right? So obviously, uh, they're kind of poking towards the conclusion that uh, we're going to be seeing a colorless tome pop up. Uh, and the next banner, obviously, that it could be on is this Mythic banner that we have. Uh, so... More than likely, that means we're getting a, myth uh, a mythic colorless tome unit. So let's go through who I think that might be. Yeah, uh, and we're gonna go in order. So first up, we're gonna be talking about Shadow the Dragon, New Mystery, basically all of the Marths. Gateau. Gateau is an interesting dude. Uh, he is playable at some point, um, but he doesn't really have anything uber unique in terms of tomes that could be colorless. Uh, he does wield Thoron, but uh, uh, we have that already. <laughs> That's a blue tome thing already. Uh, but there is one tome in the game that doesn't really do a whole lot uh, in terms of actual combat, and that would be Starlight. So Starlight is actually the uh, differentiator or uh, the opposite the destroyer of Imulu, uh, which is what our buddy Garnef uses. So, granted, it doesn't really have battle purposes, but uh, with a colorless tome, which is kind of new, obviously, uh, IS might have the opportunity to make something that's a little more unique and a little different. So, I think maybe they might embrace that. Uh, he's not a top pick for me, personally, but he could be. And uh, I think maybe keep an eye out for Gateau uh, because he could crop up. Next up, we're going to be talking about uh, a little bit of Binding Blade slash Blazing Blade stuff with Athos. So if you don't know who Athos is, uh, he is a great sage. Um, he's, I believe, one of the eight legends. Uh, and he comes packing a weapon known as... Uh, Oriola, which is an S-tier kind of light tome. Uh, not originally wielded by him, but it is in his possession. So, could be something that he has. Uh, I don't I don't know that they would go for that particular weapon for him right off the bat. Um, but, if we were going to be looking at some legendary kind of colorless tome type stuff uh, that a mythic hero might wield. It would probably be something like Oriola, and it would probably be wielded by Athos, because uh, I don't know if they're going to bring, like, the eight legends into play. I mean, they did bring Altina in, who is, in my mind, kind of in that eight legends of Elib type category. Uh... But I don't see them doing that immediately, given the opportunity to bring in a lot more other heroes that are more relevant and uh, more well known. I guess that aren't so aren't so shrouded in lore. I guess is how I would put that. Speaking of lore, 
did you know that thanks to a data mine, we have some information on some things that are coming up, uh, which I will reference right now. So uh, the data mine last, lastly uh, revealed that we were getting some Tellius stuff. Uh, and that includes a new tactics drill, which deals with the herons, and the lost lore is also Tellius based. Uh, which, based on what I'm reading, kind of seems like it's also a little bit based around the herons as well. So, for what that's worth, uh, we have seen a couple of instances with Resplendent Heroes showing up. Uh, and then having like some kind of events and things based around that. So for example, when we got Resplendent Lin, uh, we had a new Bound Hero battle, there were some banners, uh, there was a Hector, I believe, somewhere thrown in there, and uh, so we had those kind of game modes to kind of coincide with that. When we got uh, Cordelia, not long after, like a couple days later, we got Legendary Krom, who obviously fits the kind of Awakening motif. Uh, right now, we have a bunch of events that are basically three houses based. Um, but <laughs> Resplendent Ike is a thing, and so these kind of lost lore dealings may kind of be that correlation for what that is happening. Um, and again, not to backtrack, but Sophia, who is a Binding Blade character, um, Athos, Binding Blade, was present. Kinda. So, um, for what that's worth, I don't know. It's well. I mean, it's it's same game, kind of, right? <laughs> so, it's sort of, kind of same game. Like uh, Ariola was in Binding Blade, I guess. That's the main connection. Even though Athos was Blade. Never mind. Anyway, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna plow on. <laughs> Uh, anyway, point being, Tellius, Ashera, uh, she is, or Ashera, however you want to say it, um, she is, uh, there's going to be spoilers that I'm about to talk about, uh, she is a major prote or antagonist in uh, Radiant Dawn, um, she is actually a split of um, Ashenera, I think is how you say her name. Um, but she's the other half of Yune, who we have in the game, who is uh, a mythic in there already. Um, she wields a little something called Judge, which is uh, omnipotent <laughs> in some extent. Uh, it's, uh, it's a light type thing, I think. Uh, it, it's similar to how I think beast units attack in that game, if I'm remembering right. Um, but essentially, it, based on what's happening on the field, it has different kind of RNG variables that causes Judge to act differently, uh, and it has multiple different forms. How ominous that uh, it could fit a colorless tome in that same aspect, uh, because it is, I think, considered like magic type attacks. I may be misspeaking, uh, but I feel like Ashera's Judge might be fitting for that, uh, and it would kind of coincide with the Tellius themes that we're seeing with uh, Respondent Ike, and then also the uh, the Wessahusets, the um, Lost Lore. So uh, that, I think, would make sense. Uh, she is kind of one side to the coin that is the Tellius gods. Um, but speaking of things, and this is where we're going to get into real heavy spoiler territory, so just buckle up for Tellius if, if you're into that. Sephiran. Um, hmm. What, what to talk about? So he's holding a staff there. Uh, and he does wield a staff, but I don't I don't think the goddess staff is going to him. Uh, I think more than likely that is going to be going to a uh, Micaiah alt at some point. Um, but he does wield a tome uh, Cranny Lad, which uh, is I think uh, a unique weapon to him, uh, and he, he, it's during a boss fight that we discover that. Uh, it is a light tome, uh, it is exclusive to Radiant Dawn, I don't believe it's been in any other um, Fire Emblem iteration. Uh, again, he has stuff, he has had things like the Ashura Staff or the Goddess Staff, 
But I think more than likely, if we're going with a light tone, we should probably go with an actual light tone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, why is he a good candidate? Well, number one, he is uh, kind of like in the Heron family. That's a thing. Uh, he was the husband of Altina, and those two actually convinced Eshenera to split and create uh, Yune and Ashera, and they also convinced Ashera not to kill Yune, but seal her away in a medallion. He's a very important dude. <laughs> He's, he is kind of like the main plot device in the Tellius games. Uh, and uh, unless you've played them, you probably have no idea that that's a thing. So there you go. <laughs> it's, a, it's a brief overview of ruining the entire Tellius series for you. Um, but overall, I mean, it's be a good fit man uh not to mention the lost lore we're kind of like diving into herons like i feel like it's it's a strong candidate for a light tone mythic uh if we've ever had one not to mention altina's also on this banner which i find interesting i think that that would be curious you know what i mean i don't know just saying anyway uh lastly we have <sighs> lady Rhea. so uh i'm throwing Rhea on here for two reasons. Number one, um, as I said before, there's a lot of correlation between the events that we have going on, and this month is literally just three houses type stuff. Um, number two, she does wield a type of light magic, even though I'm pretty sure it's considered dark magic <laughs> in, uh, in the game, um, but that would be Agnia's Arrow. Uh, it's, I guess... Uh, a black magic spell, it debuted in Three Houses, it's depicted as like an arrow of light that comes crashing down to annihilate. Uh, could that be a colorless tome? Maybe. Is it mythic or legendary type status? I don't know. Uh, probably not. <laughs> but I do think that Rhea would be a mythic candidate. Uh maybe they won't do colorless tomes and maybe they'll wait to hold off and introduce the to the new heroes pool that we're gonna get on uh, like the fifth i think is when that is i think that's when the um the new forging bonds starts uh it could be then i don't know um again for obvious spoiler reasons i don't know that uh Rhea would be a colorless tome initially she might be a sword for example <laughs> But, uh, that's... I don't think that's gonna happen. It could happen, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, so I think the Agnius Arrow is kind of like the... The obvious choice. Unless I'm, I'm missing something clearly. Um, but that means that I just... I haven't gotten far enough in all of my playthroughs to figure that out yet. Uh, nor did any of the brief research lend me to see that she wielded some kind of crazy tone. Um, but... It's a possibility. She's definitely a mythic candidate, <laughs> for sure. Um, but either way, that's who I think we've got. This video is already wicked long, uh, so I won't go on any further. But more than likely, like I said, we are getting a colorless tome. There's a big update happening the day before uh, the mythic banner goes live. So, of course, that means that we will likely get a huge data mine from that, uh, which will have... All of the things, I mean, we'll have a trailer, so we'll know who it is before all that happens. Uh, but more than likely, we will know everything that it involves uh, from the Day of the Mind, thanks to the update that's taking place, um, at least a little bit sooner <laughs> than the actual debut. So, uh, But that's just my thoughts and opinions, and I don't know if they're right at all. So let me know in the comments who you think we're going to be seeing on this month's Mythic Banner. Um, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Be sure to stay safe, stay healthy, um, and until then, I will catch you next time.